Finally, Carter, some action on the goaltending market. As uh, we have been talking about for the last number of months, it feels like, Jake Allen is going from the Montreal Canadiens to the New Jersey Devils. The Devils finally get a goalie, and it is in exchange for a conditional third-round pick, which can become a second based on games played. So that's part of the condition. Uh, no firm um, confirmation yet, but I'm expecting that the, the Canadians are also retaining 50% on Allen, who has one year left on his deal, which would knock him down to $1.9 million for next season. I have been saying for a long time, Allen, to me, is a guy that really fits as a nice stabilizing piece for New Jersey this year, maybe he could help you make a push for the playoffs. For next year, he's the guy that you can turn to as your 1B or your backup at that rate, if that's what the retention is. So uh, still waiting on the retention part of it. But Jake Allen, number 14 on our trade targets board from Montreal to New Jersey. Interesting, Frank. Uh, so we're waiting on the news of confirmation. We got the pick and you got Jake Allen. Going to the New Jersey Devils will send Frank, who doesn't have any Wendy's up in his uh, Wendy's Insider Cam, which is really a damn shame. Get this guy some uh, 349 six pack of nuggets up in that up in the mix. Uh, let's go back to Colby and Carter. You're our goalie guy, Carter. We just talked. Markstrom to New Jersey. I, I mean, earlier in the week on Daily Face Off Live, we talked. Would New Jersey have a pivot player? Is it Markstrom or Bust? Not the case. What do you make of this move? Instead of, you know, continuing to gun for the big fish and Markstrom, they get Allen, even though they're on the outside of the playoff picture. No, this is a good stopgap for me. I think just getting him in there and solidifying a little bit of veteran leadership, not alone just on the ice, but in the room. And I think it's going to help all their goalies in general. I think they've been overplaying Dawes. Akira Schmidt has been in over his head. And Vanasek at times has been really good. And at times it's been a bit of product of, you know, this defense of core giving up too much. And th I think for me, when I played with Jake, he had a really tough year and it was a feeling that for me where I think he'd just been in St. Louis too long. And, you know, and it's, it's tough when you're in that market and you're anointed the one and it just never really came to. And when he redefined his game, he backed himself back in the net, kind of calmed his game down and he's had a lot of success since then. So for me, moving nope. forward, he's going to do the same thing in Jersey. He has, he knows who he is now. He's not worried about stopping the backdoor pass. He's not worried about the second and third opportunity. He's going to make the saves that he has to make for this hockey team. And that alone is going to instill confidence in the team moving forward, especially with a young group, right? It's different when you're sitting in a locker room and you're going out for a game and I've been there before and I've been this guy before. Trust me, I've had runs where I've been horrible. You guys can pull up my Arizona numbers. It's, I was giving up seven a game. We couldn't win if we were scoring touchdowns, right? So for me, the fact that he goes into this team and he can just, solidify that and make key saves and you're a younger guy looking in the room you bring in jake allen a stanley cup champion a guy who has a lot of experience there's value in that alone him just being around the team practicing everything he does day to day and whether it might not impact them now it's going to impact them in the future and for me i think this is a chase to catch the philadelphia flyers and that's you know their goal and i think him coming in right now i would not count this uh new jersey devil team out by any means yet well, I definitely don't agree with you in in that regard, Carter. I think the the New Jersey Devils have have played their way out of it, and I think the Flyers continue to surprise everyone with a big win last night over Florida. They get points against St. Louis a couple games ago. I think the Islanders would be the team maybe sniffing at their heels. And look, I think a lot of people out there right now are wondering well, why didn't the New Jersey Devils make this move six weeks ago? You know, why didn't they make this move a, a, a while ago? And you know, the only thing I could think of as to why they didn't make this move sooner is because, you know, based on Frank Saravalli's reporting, you know, over the last six weeks, it sounded like they were pretty far down the, the pathway with Jacob Markstrom and, and he could have been your number one guy. And Frank said this, you've said it now, uh, Jake Allen can be your perfect 1B. Trade Grades brought to you by Botano. The game starts now at Botano.ca. Matt Larkin Trade grade, Jake Allen. We thought maybe it was going to be Colorado. Turns out to be Jersey. Tom Fitzgerald's in the mix once again. This time he's adding. Give me your grades. Yeah, this is a very complicated one for me, Tyler. It's a C plus for the New Jersey Devils for me. And I agree to a point with the notion, well, why didn't you make this trade for Jake yeah. Allen earlier? I think it's because we know the Devils were in hard on Jacob Markstrom. So Jake Allen was not their plan A. 
My yeah. problem with it is you just traded your leading goal scorer an hour ago or two hours ago. You sent the message that you're packing it in. Why do you need to make this trade now? Yes, I get the idea that with the retention, you have a decent 1B carrying over into next season, but do you need to make that decision now? Don't you want to keep the roster flexibility in the summer and maybe pursue some bigger game? Maybe go after Markstrom again. Maybe go after UC Soros if he doesn't sign an extension. I don't understand the rationale of making this move now, especially because the Devils, their playoff odds right now, 17.7%. They are six points out of a playoff spot. And again, I don't buy the notion that they got to stabilize things and give this team a chance. No, you just traded Tyler Toffoli. Your top goal scorer is gone. You can't send this conflicting message. So to me, C+, plus, even as I'm saying it now, I'm like, wait, maybe I got to downgrade this to a C. And from Montreal's standpoint, I give it an A. It's a pretty simple trade for Ken Hughes. You have that glutton net. You have Sam Montembeau signed, of course. You have Caden Primo, who's capable of becoming that number two. You get rid of that log jam. So to me, it's clean. And um, you move off uh, half that cap in on Jake Allen going into next year. So easy trade for Montreal. I like it. New Jersey, I just think the timing's wrong. This would have made sense a month ago. And I get it was because he wasn't their primary target. But to me, you just don't make that trade today based on how things have played out. Yeah, I, I honestly think I'm with you. If this was, like Frank said, six weeks ago, no problem if you're New Jersey. You're in the hunt. If you think Jake Allen's going to get you two, three extra wins, that's the difference. At this point, what above replacement level is Allen going to be able to truly do for you in the final 20 games? Even if it is significant, you've lost your best goal scorer. You're not going on a long playoff run. I think it was punt time in New Jersey. Interesting to see that uh, this ends up being the route they take. Matt, thanks for doing this. Of course, my friend. What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Saravalli, fantasy updates from Brock Sagan, and a daily live show at noon Eastern, Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button.